Hi, this is Debbie at Color Color Everywhere, and today I had a request to show how I make page edgies, is what I call them. They're really just little clusters that go on the edge of your pages. So here I've taken pages out of books and uh, folded them into narrow strips and glued them together so that they are um, basically just a flat piece of uh, folded paper with the ends closed. And uh, then I've taken strips of um, book pages and um, scrapbook paper and uh, just whatever you know I feel is a little bit of a contrast, something not the same kind of paper. And um, I'm doing these all at one time because I, I like to do that if I'm, work, if I'm going to use them in the same journal I like for them to look similar throughout the book and uh, the bases at least are similar the tops will look different so this is what I do I um, layer two three four different things on there and um, as you can see I've decided I wanted one more so I just took another piece of uh, book page and layered those two there now, it bothers me if they're upside down, so I'm, <laughs> I'm turning them around so that the print is um, going in the, the right direction. <clears throat> I have a hard time putting things upside down. Now, as usual, in, in most of my pieces, I like to use some uh, a lot of contrast. and um, So that's what I'm doing here. I'm um, tearing some black paper. This is just black scrapbook paper. And I'm tearing it to uh, fit with these pieces that I've already matched up. I really like making these and I like doing them this way um, all at once because it just makes them look more coherent if I'm using them in the same book. And sometimes I'll make them and I'll end up having too many for the book I'm working on so I just use those in another book. They don't have to match but um, I like for them to um, look somewhat similar in the same book if I, if I can. It just really makes it look nice. So I'm just layering these uh, together. Um, I don't want it to look all black, so I'm putting the black underneath the, the brown pieces, and that just kind of gives it a pop of contrast underneath the brown pieces. sometimes the um, book pages that are the the base that are folded sometimes I will use watercolors or neo twos or um, paint pens or just anything to um, color those so that the background is is colored instead of um, light colored And sometimes they'll uh, use long, longer pieces of paper to make the bases and um, the book page bases. And if they're too long, I just rip the piece off and then I can use it for a cluster. So it doesn't get wasted. I like being able to use up all of my papers if possible. It doesn't break my heart to throw something away, but if I can use it, I will. I mean, you know, everything costs something. You can see I'm sort of making them pointy at the ends, and um, that just gives it a little bit more interest. And you see the one on, on the far left the black piece is smaller, but it still gives it just enough color in there to um, make it interesting. And I could have used some other colors. I could have used blue or green or pink or whatever, but um, I just, I'm partial to using the black. I'm working on a journal right now that has no, uh, no brown inking. And I didn't realize how difficult that would be <laughs> because I like to do it. I like the way it, it adds 
to the contrast and I also haven't used any black um, for contrast in that journal and it's almost done but it's not my it's not been my favorite one it's okay but uh, you know it's not my favorite so I probably won't do that a lot I was trying to step out of my box a little bit but sometimes you have to stay in that box a little bit longer until you get through with what's in it. You also notice that the pieces that I'm tearing kind of have a curve to them. And if I made them all straight, then they wouldn't, they just stack on top of each other and you wouldn't see much. So I usually make them a little bit curved with more pointed, or you know, uh, I don't want to say pointed, but that's the only other way I can think of, so more pointed ends. So now once I get this done, I can either go ahead and glue them in place or go ahead and start adding more pieces, which normally I do go ahead and add more pieces. That way if I want to change something, it's not glued down. So here's a piece that I have done some, um, uh, I believe this is maybe watercolors on. And it's really just scribbled on there just to put some color. And it doesn't have to go all the way to the edges because it's going to get folded. Sorry, you can't see that very well, but that's what I'm doing. I'm folding it into a long strip. But you see how long that is. That's really too long for my for a page. And I could have just left that left uh, one on the left as it is and gone from there. But I decided I wanted to I wanted it to have a back too. So <laughs> all that fiddling and then it just flies apart <laughs> so I after I do that I just sort of get things in place the way I think they're gonna look and just clip them together until I get ready to glue the other pieces on but I I guess I decided I know where these go so I just fold one edge down, stick on some glue, and glue that edge down. And then flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. And these will all be ready for the um, cluster type, cluster parts to go on them. So I'm going to do that with each one. So I've got out some packets of lace and I'm looking for some other things to use. And these pieces that I'm pulling out now are um, pieces of sheer curtains that I've purchased at the thrift store. They were already that color. That's a piece of trim. It's a piece of um, tatted trim that is actually um, ecru colored, but I dyed it. And here are some crocheted flowers that I've done. I just do a bunch of them up at once and then they're ready for when I want to use them. Those orange ones are pretty. There's some little pieces of lace, but they're too big for what I want. I kind of save some of those for my the crochet edgings for my uh, journal covers and different things. And I found another few little things to pull out, just things to use in, in the 
um, cluster part of the edges. That way I have a lot to choose from. So at this point I just go through and um, sometimes I will, just how I have them laid out here, I will pick out pieces to uh, go with each one and lay those by that particular background and then and I'll just keep doing that until I have enough to um, fill it up. But in this case, um, I'm kind of doing this one all by, by itself. And there's a piece of uh, cheesecloth. I'm just cutting off those hard edges. I don't like those. It just adds another layer, even if you don't see it very much. It's hard to see here because um, for some reason I, my camera won't focus any better than it is right now. I've had a hard time with it. But um, when you see this in person, you really see all those little layered pieces. This tatted trim was given to me by uh, my best friend and it was from her grandmother who made it and I have a big ball of it. My friend passed away a couple of months ago and um, I really miss her. Every time I use something that she's given me, because she's always given, she was always giving me things, I have a box of crochet thread and um, different things like that that she she would give me because she was not a keeper. She didn't, if she had something she wasn't going to use, she'd get rid of it. <laughs> and um, I was always glad to take it because it was usually something I would use. So I have a lot of things she's given me that remind me of her when I use them. And all I'm doing here is just a process of trying different pieces to see what I think is going to work, what I like. I don't do a certain number of layers, although it usually turns out anything that it is um, that I like usually has an uneven number of layers. It just works out that way. It's more pleasing to the eye Th in threes and fives and sevens, whatever. It, it's not always necessary, but it always is, seems to be more pleasing to the eye when it works out like that. Okay, so I like that pretty well. And later on I'll stick a button in the middle of the flower. Oh, there's the button. Keep my colored buttons in canning jars like this, small canning jars. Plus I also have a old spice rack that has little spice bottles in it and um, I keep a lot of colors, uh, the smaller amounts in those. So all I have, you know, two large um, jars with white buttons in them, antique white buttons in them. I have another big tin that has uh, big buttons in it and then I have another tin that has sets of buttons that are you know put together that match and then I have like I said the little the little jars with the colors that have smaller buttons in them people know that I do a lot of different things so I often get old jewelry old sewing supplies things like that. Old thread, old yarn. <laughs> I don't do much with the yarn anymore because I can't, my, I have arthritis and my hands and my shoulders don't allow me to do it like I used to. But every once in a while I'll sit down and do a little bit. I just can't power knit anymore or power crochet anymore for hours on end really fast. 
but uh, so when someone gives me yarn, I know a couple of people who um, do things for homeless people, so I make sure they get the yarn, and then they do that and give them scarves away and gloves away at Christmas and what have you, or I'm sorry, in the winter. So it gets used. This little piece has a is pulled. I don't know what happened there, but I can still use it because I'm just going to glue it on anyway. So just glue it on. So here, let's see. Already, I've got one, two, three, four, five layers. On that first one, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, I think. No, seven maybe on the on the first one. Now I have all these little inchy um, images, and they work really good for something like this. I'm pretty sure those came from uh, Graphics Fairy. usually just sort of cut them apart, not all the way um, down to the inch ones because then they're hard to store, but um, I'll cut them apart so that they're easier to store than in the big sheets. And then like you can see that one laying on the top, there's three images there, and then when I'm ready to use one I'll cut it off. Now you can see my cheesecloth um, is in layers and I just dye it that way and then when I want to use it I pull it apart. Because the layers are so thin that if you tried to pull them apart and store them that way, it just would be make a mess. So this way, it's a little better. See, that's not much. It's not that much different in color. It's not that thick. You can see through it, but it adds it certainly adds to the um, design because it puts a more texture in there and just a slight bit of color to differentiate the two pieces of paper. Okay, we're going to zoom through a couple of these so it doesn't take quite so long.
So I decided I didn't like the direction that was going in. I wanted it to be on the side of a page, and I wasn't thinking about it when I glued that on. So I had to turn him around before he got too dry. Now let's just go through gluing this one together. Now remember the bottom uh, few layers are already glued together. And this is a good way to do it to, so that you don't lose track of, of um, your order. I just flipped over the part that wasn't glued yet. So I can now I can glue it all in place. Usually I'll use a glue stick just to grab the uh, cheesecloth because the glue that goes on next will kind of hold it down. probably use uh, fabric glue at this point. I don't know why I, gra I grabbed the glitter glue at that then, but it works too. You just have to put more. I tend to use my glitter glue when it's so it's not required to be very thick. But if something's thick or fabric related, then I'll use, there we go, <laughs> I'll get out the fabric, fabric glue. So here are four finished pieces that can be used on the edge of a page. They can be used as belly bands or um, however you want to use them. They were fun to make. I really like making them and they add a lot to your journals. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, I hope you have fun making some of these yourself. There is no set things that you have to use with it. 
use your imagination, you can use whatever supplies you like. This is just one of the ways that I make these. Thanks for visiting. Come back again.